Countrywide, the National Forensic Science Service has 60 personnel. The Medical Examiner's Office is the smallest of the three units of the department. This unit was officially established in May 2014 and its mission is the same as the entire forensic department, to assist in the administration of justice by providing scientific-based evidence, in the case of this unit, through autopsy findings. Our staff here at the Belize Medical Examiner's Office consists of five individuals, myself as the assistant director and also anatomic pathologist. We have two posts of medical examiners. One is a contracted officer, and then we have one under the public service. And we have a, a coroner's assistant, which is also the pathology assistant. And then we have a eviscerator. Uh, he's also a scenes of crime technician. I'm responsible for coordinating uh, all the medical legal autopsies in the country. Uh, I liaise with the police and the family members to make arrangements and to uh, to make arrangements for the all, and all the logistics for the autopsies conducted here in Belize. After the autopsies conducted, I would sit and uh, answer their questions and uh, tell them uh, and explain to them the cause of death and answer their questions as much as possible in relation to the cause of death. A forensic pathologist is a medical examiner who performs a post-mortem for an investigation in a criminal or civil case. However, currently there isn't a forensic pathologist in the country. Dr. Ken explained the difference between his work as an anatomic pathologist and the work of a forensic pathologist. Anatomic pathologist specialist uh, and studies diseases, you know, the causes, the mechanisms, of how diseases occur or, or injuries occur as well. Forensic pathology is a sub-special specialization within anatomic pathology. For someone to become a forensic pathologist, we, they need to do anatomic pathology, either anatomic pathology, general pathology, or clinical pathology. In my case, I am an anatomic pathologist, so all I need is a fellowship in forensic medicine to become a forensic pathologist. The role of this unit is to support police investigations. The medical examiner's office is responsible for death investigations that are of public interest. We perform the medical legal autopsies to determine cause of death. And depending on the circumstances surrounding death, the manner of death, in this case, classified as natural uh, suicide, accidents, homicides, and undetermined. The reportable deaths investigated by the Belize Medical Examiner's Office are like, and for example, work-related deaths, you know, in the workplace, something happens and you die. Those are investigated, or deaths are at, and a person in police custody, for example, you know, and sudden unexpected deaths, either in babies, infants, adolescents, adults, and suspected drownings, or apparent drowning as well, and un unidentified individuals, and foreign nationals, and intoxication, either or alcohol, drugs, poisons, and body parts. Uh, there's the numerous. Death investigations require a multidisciplinary team approach. For this reason, the medical examiner's office maintains a good working relationship with its partners. We cannot work without the assistance of a scenes of crime technician, uh, as well as the police department, you know, and the forensic laboratory. It's a combination of all four uh, units and departments as well for the investigation, or proper investigation of that. This is not only about us, the medical examiner's office, it's about the combination of other disciplines, either in the forensic laboratory, the scenes of crime, and also of the police department. So how do the functions of this office support the functions of its partners? At the moment we have a uh, shallow grave, not far from here, 
in which the police investigator uh, has have been called to a scene, right? and they are the ones uh, collecting data, doing the interviews, and they are the f one of the first responders to the scene. So, uh, being notified of such event, they call on to the scenes of crime. The scenes of crime in, uh, technician goes to the scene and. and First, they have to look for evidence, so take photographic documentation of the scene, uh, where is it located, etc. Then, after doing so, they w coordinate with the medical examiner's office, in this case with the forensic coordinator that we mentioned, uh, the same and pathology assistant. He would go to the scene and, and uh, determine whether or the, the, we have a body there, is it human, is it of animal, right? so he will be doing his investigation in turn. And again, when that is done, when the body is retrieved from the shallow grave, then the body is taken to the, to the morgue where the medical examiner, in this case, I would go and then do perform the autopsy on the body to determine the cause of that. Of important note is that the post-mortem examinations done by the medical examiner's office are not the same as the clinical examinations done by the Ministry of Health. Forensic autopsies are done for criminal matters. Although the medical examiners might be able to determine the cause of death, there are times that bodies are in a decomposing state and identification is difficult. When this happens, DNA testing is required. In this case, we rely on DNA testing, and in country, we don't have that facility or testing method, so we outsource these samples, and these would take more than six months to obtain results. It's the outsourcing of DNA testing at the moment is limited by the fact that we are required to hand deliver exhibits to whichever lab reference laboratory we use. If we were to move towards a system where, as they have in other jurisdictions, those items can be sent via secure courier services, for instance, the main ones FedEx and DHL, it would minimize the turnaround time, it would minimize the cost on our end, per diem travel accommodation, it would minimize some of the risks associated with carrying those items in checked luggage as compared to using an established courier service. The Ministry of Health is an important partner to this unit. The medical examiners have been using the morgues at the different hospitals in the country to conduct autopsies and to store bodies. This makes infrastructure a priority area for this unit, particularly the need to have a centralized morgue. In the ideal world, we'll have our own morgue, a forensic morgue for the department that we can absolutely ensure the, the storage of, of bodies or of cases or evidential potential evidential material under conditions that we stipulate rather than at the, at the, the conditions or the criteria of the owner of the morgue. In 2018, the medical examiner's office conducted a total of 446 post-mortem examinations countrywide. The majority of these were done at the Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital morgue, with the remainder being done at the various Ministry of Health morgues across the country and the morgue at the Central American Health Sciences University on the Borrell Boom Road. The vast majority of the cases handled by the medical examiner's office are those that arise from sudden deaths, gunshot wounds, or road traffic accidents. Deaths due to blunt force trauma injury, sharp force injury, hanging or drowning also made up a considerable portion of the cases handled by the unit. Another priority area is to build the competency of the staff as forensic practitioners, not only for the medical examiner's office, but the entire forensic department. Our staff that sign off on reports, that certify findings, whether cause and manner of death or 
uh, process a crime scene and have produced a ro report that will be used by investigators or prosecutors or produce um, reports of analysis on firearms or, or, or blood samples or seized drugs or toxicology. The staff have to be able, able and prepared to be called to court to testify. Before they even are able to submit um, their reports or tender the reports into evidence, they have to be accepted first as an expert witness. And so that we have to be able to demonstrate that they've gone through certain trainings, that they have um, certain systems in place that, that allow them to be able to do their work under, under certain minimum standards to be able to, to ensure or to prove or to demonstrate that they, they work um, independently and objectively and try and to produce quality work and also that they, there is proper oversight or accountability so that it, it is not biased to any one side or like I said the, the, the findings are based on reliable scientific principles. Dr. Blanco has recently completed his master's degree in forensic anthropology, which in a nutshell is the study of the human skeleton applying forensic science. This means that the office can now offer additional services. Well, we can offer services now as a qualified forensic anthropologist and we can be able to examine human remains and determine uh, more or less the, the time that they, the time interval that they're dead the sex, the age, and um, the probable cause of death. As the forensic anthropology progresses, uh, our goal is to bring closure to a lot of the families that have missing or unidentified persons. What we plan to do is, uh, in the near future, is to create a complete biological profile of all the skeletal remains we have found that we have in our possession, and to get uh, the family members to come in and voluntarily give their DNA samples so we can match them and probably find closure uh, to their missing persons. While the NFSS recognizes all their areas for growth, the department continues to make the most of their resources in serving the justice system and Belize.